Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Grain Feed, brought to you by EverAg. This is your weekly news feed for all things grain and all things feed. Each week, we bring you updates on the markets with unique perspectives from an amazing team of analysts with the intention of helping dairy and livestock producers manage their risk. I'm your host, Jim Matthews, reporting from the Chicago office. Joining me today, as always, from Texas, Director of Feed Procurement, Mr. Jake Kingsley. And returning to the grain feed from way down in Atlanta, Illinois, Director of Buyer Relations, Viral Prather. Team, how are we today? Doing pretty good. Got a game day here, Jim, so we're doing all right. Another great day. What game is that, Jake? That's your local Kansas State Wildcats taking on the Michigan State Spartans in a guaranteed win. Local Kansas State. It's not local for anyone. <laughs> it's local for some people. <laughs> what about you, Burl? It's doing great here in central Illinois. Just another uh, rainy uh, beginning of spring day. Yeah, it really has been a cold and rainy stretch here in Illinois. We're driving around Indiana also last week and it's kind of been the vibe among some folks it's just it's just been cold and damp and kind of hard to envision that we're supposed to be maybe getting those fields prepped in the next what bro four to six weeks for some folks yeah no doubt no doubt i think uh folks are kind of at the point where hey it's it's no longer going to be an early spring uh for planting yeah uh still still fairly early nonetheless so it can't uh, test exactly right planting quite yet that's exactly right. Yeah, we won't uh, count our chickens just yet. Um, before we keep talking markets here, Paige, if you would kindly timestamp the broadcast, it is Thursday morning. Markets are under some pressure here again in Chicago. We did have the corn market find some nice strength on the old crop side of things not too long ago this morning. But since then, we've come back towards unchanged on corn. We'll let Verl touch on that market action and what might have inspired uh, the recent support in old crop. Protein remains notably under pressure. We have nearby meal now trading officially below $450 per ton. May is at $442 as we record, and that October and December meal contracts are inching ever closer back to $400. So lots to run through here today. Let's turn to you again, Verl. All of this market action, we've had a lot influencing the market. I think the big note for the grain and feed markets over the last couple weeks has been the pressure we've been under and some of this liquidation, if you will, from managed money, which for the viewers, the CFTC releases a commitment of traders report every Friday or so they are supposed to do, right, Verl? Um, they had a vendor of theirs uh, come under some, we'll just say some technical issues. And a lot of those reports had been delayed for some time. So Verl, you mind just kind of helping us with the, maybe the significance of those reports. And if we are caught up, what maybe we're seeing now in the marketplace? Yeah, yeah, no doubt, Jim. So Starting um, around the middle of February, actually, the CFTC had decided to start postponing these uh, Friday, typically released on Friday reports. Um, along the way, you know, we've had private firms that have continued to try to estimate um, the positioning of where the funds were. And we have gotten some pretty big surprises over the last week or so. So last week, uh, we finally got the data in from the CFTC for the week of, uh, or the last week of February, and then also the first week of March. And then they caught back up to uh, the timely schedule this week, uh, releasing the data for um, the week ending March 14th. And uh, surprisingly, right, the funds had actually liquidated 277,000 contracts of corn in this three week period. Um, so they went from a long position to now uh, being uh, just over 59,000 contracts short as of the 14th of March. Uh, this really caught a lot of these private firms 
off guard uh, because ultimately a lot of these folks thought that the funds were still in a position of being long 100,000 plus contracts of corn. And I think that just points towards, you know, that that big of a liquidation and the corn markets, you know, they've, they've dropped and they've dropped fairly significantly. But if you would have told me four weeks ago that the funds were about to sell 277,000 contracts of corn, I probably would have said that the market would have come under more pressure than what we've seen. Now it's kind of interesting, you know, it, it feels like it's been a delayed reaction, um, but now the funds are after soybeans, right? And now soybeans have become uh, quite the uh, spectacle, if you will, over the last couple of weeks and, and really finding the pressure. And so it wouldn't be all that surprising if, if the funds are, are looking to get closer to a net neutral on the bean market. Yeah, I, I think the the difference between corn I guess grains as well, because wheat has also been under some pretty significant pressure too. So we'll say grains versus the soy complex. So looking at meal and oil too uh, for soybeans. Uh, yeah, Verl, excellent point. I mean, the the delay there of the funds, we refer to the funds as like uh, anyone managing money, if you will. So these are a, a different category uh, from the CFTC than a, a producer of the commodity of which we're trading. Um, or a commercial entity that might be uh, buying and processing these commodities. Um, so m- mostly hedgers on either side, but these this category of managed money or the funds that we refer to them as uh, really hit that corn and wheat market aggressively first. And as you said, Verl, I mean, we took Nov beans uh, back under 13 bucks pretty quick now. I mean, we're trading closer to 1250, which I think is significant for a lot of folks who might have you know, cost of production numbers getting closer to these levels and even nearby, despite the worries in Argentina and the tightness of the U.S. balance sheet, we've taken May beans back down towards $14. So quite the move. We've also seen, though, folks taking advantage of this break on the physical side, Verl. And I think a lot of the conversations we've been having on this show about the corn market specifically and the lack of export demand for old crop corn. We've seen a shift in that now over the last two weeks. Would you mind touching on that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, China loves a good deal, right? And uh, China's actually come back to the U.S. corn market in a massive way over the last week. Um, We've seen daily sales announcements from the USDA for corn going into China seven out of the last eight trading days. And uh, with that, you know, the market was expecting a pretty big number today. Um, from the USDA for the weekly export sales. Uh, They did announce 3.5 million metric tons were sold in the week ending March 16th. Um, And that's much needed uh, for the pace of exports that we held up to this point. Um, There's been been left a a lot to be desired um, for the corn market, and we've seen consistent um, lowering of those export estimates from the USDA on their monthly WASDE reports. Uh, but but that was a, a big kind of catch up week. Uh, we still need more. Um, we need to average around 500,000 metric tons from here on out for this marketing year. Uh, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. Certainly a step in the right direction. That's right. And the the continued discussions of old versus new crop markets, right? This old crop marketplace is the one honed in on uh, these export numbers. Perhaps we're not going to loosen the U.S. balance sheet as much as we thought for old crop, but to turn to new crop, there's a lot impacting that market as well, which has been under pressure for a bit longer. And we have a big report here coming out a week from tomorrow. It's the planning intentions report on Friday the 31st. So Viral, what's your take on that upcoming report? Yeah, it's gonna be gonna be a big report. Um, these reports have the ability to add a lot of volatility to the market. Obviously, it feels like uh, we're at a spot where how how could you add more volatility to what we've already seen lately? But the reality is is these reports always have uh, the potential to have surprises within them. Also being released on on uh, next Friday will be the quarterly stocks report alongside of the prospective planting report. So a little more to do with old crop there. But as far as new crop goes, 
Uh, the market's going to be really watching this prospective planting report from the USDA, and we'll start building estimates uh, for what that 23 to 24 marketing year is going to be like for corn and soybeans. Obviously, they are looking for quite a bit of growth to the ending stocks for corn at this time in the Ag Outlook Forum. Uh, printed a number that was a lot closer to 2 billion bushels of ending stocks than most corn producers would like to see. Um, now, there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind here. One of them being that the research activity or surveys that go out um, in relation to this report were conducted the first couple of weeks of March. Um, and that basically means, you know, this recent market, market activity could really alter the actual outcome or intentions of the producers um, down the road. So we're just looking at this market from one single snapshot, if you, if you will, but, but the markets are always moving. Uh, so most notably, you know, since that time frame, we've seen this massive downturn in, in new crop soybean prices, as you mentioned. So, you know, that first half of March, we were loosely trading about a 1340 to 1390 range compared to the current price of shy of 1260. So as a result, the, the new crop soybean to corn ratio has really been under some pressure and it's starting to lean closer towards a, a neutral position versus leaning toward additional soybean acres. One could take that as as the potential to get the producer to, to plant a, a little bit more corn, even after this report comes out. And additionally, um, we've seen some cheaper input prices on the corn side of things as well. That's true. Yeah. And the, you, you use the word snapshot, very important there. Uh, it's, it's those snapshots of where the new crop markets have been trading have changed a lot in the last, you know, four weeks and that riding the waves of whether it's more attractive or enticing to plant corn versus beans, depending on where Dees corn and November beans are trading. Uh, it feels like we're just trading acres at this point. It's It's been a pretty wild ride to watch this as we head into that uh, potentially volatile report next week. It certainly was a year ago. I think the government gave everybody a really big surprise uh, and really sent markets cruising last year at this time. So very important to watch for that. Burl, thank you for your insights there. So Jake Kingsley with a lot happening here in the grain and feed markets and more to come in the approaching weeks. What's your take on the physical feed markets? Well, like you said, Jim, a lot going on here. Uh, Verl had touched on uh, funds finally getting uh, some of that data caught up and feels like that's been a big driver in some of this old crop uh, price movement over the last couple of weeks. So our main priority has been taking advantage of those breaks in soybean meal and corn futures to get some of that old crop stuff priced out. I think we've got a lot of folks covered up through the end of May at this point on both their corn and their protein usage. Um, and now we're starting to evaluate, OK, what are our targets for June, July and August, September? Do we have more downward movement in these markets as we go forward or do they start to find some support here? And this is our best shot at cleaning up the rest of this old crop contracting period. So that's the work we've been doing the last couple of weeks. And then, uh, as you said, you know, these price movements could very much sway the way next Friday's report comes out. And so if we have any sort of a shift like we did with last year's prospective plantings uh, to where we come in and we cut corn acres in favor of beans, because right now, uh, most folks we talk to seems like corn's getting near to a break even price and beans still have a little bit of profitability in them here for this coming crop year. Uh, so if that is in fact buying bean acres away from corn and we see a shift on that report next Friday, uh, I think it's very important to be managing and taking advantage of this five and a half dollar mark on the new crop corn board there. Uh, we continue to find resistance right in that area and there's some pretty cost effective ways to make sure that kind of limits your upside as well as having plenty of downside flexibility in it for the crop year to come. Um, and, and you said, you know, new crop soybean meal has come down a fair bit as well. We're starting to approach that $400 mark, not quite as attractive hedging options out there for that piece yet, 
but it is something to start to think about. We'll try to reevaluate what we could do on a cash contract or if there is something we could do utilizing the exchange to kind of start to capture that. I think last year, shoot, we bottomed out at like 365 for just a day or two. And really the uh, market spent most of its time at 380 or higher. So we're not far from there. Might be time to start working on that one as well. So Yeah, I think the the market is clearly anticipating maybe some big acreage numbers next week as we sell into this thing. I think one of the expressions of the trading industry is that buy the rumor, sell the fact type of market reaction on reports. Perhaps it's a little bit of the opposite. Maybe sell the rumor and potential buy the fact scenario at the end of next week if the acreage numbers are not impressive enough for some. And at a circle back to Verl, if managed money is now net short corn and potentially approaching those types of levels in the soy complex, it certainly feels like they would have some ammo to step back in with some buying power uh, if they felt compelled to do so. So it's going to be a busy couple weeks here, folks. So let's keep an eye on things. Uh, in the meantime, thank you both for your insights today. Before I let you go, Jake, tonight is your big game for your local team, Kansas State. I believe you have an arrangement with our colleague, Cody Koster, who is the co-host of critically acclaimed Ever Ag Insights show, Tech Talk. So please tune in to Tech Talk, wherever you find your Ever Ag Insights shows. Jake, what's the arrangement you have with Cody based on the outcome of tonight's game? Well, here in a week or two, loser has to wear the winning team's attire on their next production. So uh, should be an interesting show here in a week or two. I think we're both traveling next week, so it may be two episodes yeah. from now. I just got to say, I worked a lot harder and spent a lot more money to acquire these than that dollar store flag Co Cody's flying behind him on his show. So I'm feeling pretty good about the cats tonight. Pretty excited to see Cody in some purple. In uh, Jake, well, I hope you win. I hope we don't lose any of our Michigan dairy relationships as a result. But in the meantime, maybe you should get Cody's address. Sounds like you're pretty confident you're going to send him a shirt. It's already on the way. <laughs> Okay, good deal. Well, everybody stay tuned for that game this evening, Thursday evening, and of course, the grain and feed market. So thanks again, both. Thanks to Verl for returning to the show. Always great to have you from Atlanta, Illinois. Great to have your insights. Thank you to Corey and the Everag Insights crew for their support. Thank you to Paige for her production magic. And thank you to the viewers for watching the grain feed contact information is on the screen. We greatly appreciate your feed back. That's all for today. We'll see you next time on The Grain Feed. Go Cats!